Okay, come down to the palette. We have uh, top of the sky is going to be black and Prussian blue, equal parts. We add some into white, and then you put a little alizarin crimson into flavor. The cloud, which is uh, in the sky, is two parts black, one part Prussian blue, and then we add a little white into that. I'll also use some of that with a little more white for the foam that splashes against the beach a little bit. The water is blue and black, equal parts. At, well, e actually, even the yellow ochre is equal parts. Blue and black and ochre, equal parts. Put just a touch of white in for the, dark, for the water. Here we have the dark sand. Burn number plus yellow ochre, straight. That means no white when I say straight. The light sand, where are you? Oh, the light sand, orange, umber, and white. I don't know where you went. Oh, you went right over here, didn't you? Orange, umber, and white. That's also going to be a little bit for the uh, hair of the uh, uh, young girl. We have foliage, black, green, and add yellow ochre. We have some... Uh, uh, sampling little light colors here. We have yellow ochre and white. We have yellow ochre and white. We have red and white. We'll use the ochre and white on the hair highlights and we'll also use it in the sky, in the sky, in the sky. Those right three where the light's showing. We already said the yellow ochre and umber and white which was used for the light sand will be the same thing as for the hair of the little girl. We have the girl's, little girl's dress. It's black and white with a little orange and then just a little extra orange will show her shadow hand. Coming up, coming up, coming up, that means coming up. Black and red is the lady's hair, and then a lizard crimson is going to be the dark uh, dress for the lady. A little bit of red will be the highlights uh, for the lady's dress and maybe a little yellow. It reminds me too, we have a kind of a joke in at home when I go out of town and time to come back and I call my wife from the airport and say it's time to pick me up. Tweet? She'll say, good, I'll be right there. What will you be wearing? Just as if she doesn't, won't recognize me unless I tell her what she's wearing. I wasn't gone that long. Okay, let's go ahead, look at the canvas. We have a black canvas. It's dry. How come it's dry? It's black acrylic. And we're going to let some of this play through. And when we put the colors on, we can go quite dark and they'll look very light. That's really a Rembrandt style and technique. I've put... Uh, contact paper over the lady and the girl so that when I push the colors around boldly I can lift off and she'll be clear cut and I won't have to worry about covering over the lines. Okay we'll take a little bit of the top sky color uh, just a little bit of uh, clear medium and I'm using the big one inch brush because this is sort of a scrub scrub and here goes the scrub scrub. It has a little bit pink flavor because we did say you put just a little touch of alizarin crimson in that. We'll come around. This uh, is best put on uh, sort of thick like. You, you might see a little bit of black coming through, but I don't really see, think we'll see much there. You'll see more of that happen as we come down the water and on the land and the grass. Angle down slightly. And before we put the clouds on, I'm going to put some of the light uh, <clears throat> where the light source will be. This is a nice technique where you put the lights on and then work the clouds into it and they sort of soften into the light silver lining which is on early. Or you can put the clouds on and then put the silver lining on. There's two ways of doing it. I'm choosing to do it this way where we put the lights on first. I have red and white. I almost have to sneak over here and add just a little bit more red. Just a slight bit darker. That's not much though. Okay, we'll come right in here, and I, I know where the light's going to be. See, the light's going to be just a little bit there. You see the plastic or the contact paper, so you know where the lady and her child are standing, and then we'll have a little distant boat, which is just the symbolism of the arrival of the one that was waited for. Okay, we'll put this up. Isn't that a nice color? That's very rich. And I'm going to choose to use a little bit of this lower so the cloud can blend into it. And even for the feeling of a little hope, which is always nice when you're waiting for someone, hoping they're coming, we'll take some of the same reddish tone and let's just surround ever so gently around the sailboat, the area of their focus. We'll lose a lot of that when we put the clouds on, but it, it gives us a little more warmth than if we left it the way it was. Okay, we'll come now, we'll come with the cloud color, the two black and one Prussian blue into white. I'm going to use the dry brush. I, there's just a slight amount of uh, 
cleaner on this as I use the Terps, cleaned it. It has just a little bit of moisture, so this, this will work just as is. The height of the cloud will be higher, will be highest on the right side to balance up that rhythm that you have with the lady and the girl on the other side. I don't know, I keep wanting to say the, the lady and the tiger. Remember that story? Was that, was that O'Neill or Henry? Somebody out there? Oh, okay, thank you. I don't know any more than I, when I first asked you. Okay, we'll go with this. Anyway, the lady and the girl would probably be better. Put that on, and as I put it on here, I am coming across that little pink tone slightly that I put on earlier. And I have to come close enough so that the boat is slightly felt, the sailboat there. Okay, we'll put this across, and this is where we have the privilege of putting this on when you have the contact paper. So you can go right across, and then we'll be able to lift this up. Because if we're not able to lift it up, Bob Warren, wherever you are, wherever you are, it was your idea. I guess uh, Robert Warren, he, he goes by both, but Robert Warren, a fine artist in his own right. Okay, we came a little closer there. I guess what I did when I put up that pink, I didn't go ahead and, and put on the lightest color, did I? Well, that's all right. We'll do it. We'll do that just, just about now. Let's come down. We'll take a uh, knife. By golly, <laughs> Wait, we don't need a knife. Why would we want a knife when we got the nice fan brush? Fan brush is coming. We'll take the yellow ochre and white, and I'm going to go ahead and use the little darker yellow ochre and white before uh, we got the knife. We'll still use the fan brush. We we'll use a fan brush for this, and then the lightest light we'll come back and put on with a knife, because this one we're going to blend away quite a bit. I'm glad we couldn't find the knife, because I'd have put it up right away, and it really shouldn't come until we're putting the lightest light on. It's always a little uh, trickery there. You had to wait for me, didn't you? Okay, here comes yellow ochre and white, which is much lighter, less ochre. And this is going to go up high. Before we use a knife, we'll use a little bit of this just to thin out. I want it there, but we blend it quite a lot so it won't look very bright. A little bit over on this side. So you get, I better take a little bit more, just so you get a feeling of finding the edge of that cloud. Okay, uh, I suppose the blender brush, you know, I went through all the colors, but I didn't tell you the brushes. Well, I'll tell you as I come with them, okay? Bunny brush, blender brush, gently. Gently, there we go, soften that, soften this, blend around there. Okay, now it's the time for the knife to come. I better blend a little bit here though, that dark is a little too strong. Okay, here comes the knife, and this will be taking the yellow ochre and white. That's how it looks on the bottom of, bottom of the knife. And then we just put this right up in your previous yellow ochre and white. So you get impact right there. And just sort of roll it around, which blends in a little bit, but still has its vitality. Okay, that'll be good, but we will we'll take and choose to use just a small amount of blending with the blender, bunny brush. I need to say that because there's a, you talk about a fan blender means a blender. This is a soft blender, but it's a bunny brush, hockey brush. We'll come down to the water, we'll take our, um, Blue, black, and yellow ochre with a little white. This will be our water. We'll come back and forth across here. You can leave just a little bit of the underneath uh, canvas showing because you don't change a lot of the color here until you put on just a little bit of white. I, I think to do that, I'll go ahead and take some of the uh, cloud color. This is the blue, black, and white. We'll make some little strokes that go back and forth across here. That's not quite light enough either. So we'll come down, take a little bit of white, and then come over to the blue-black. So you're getting the blue-black and white, but much more white. That's much better. And we put this down so you have a little bit of the, what you call the wake, that's coming from the boat, and as, as it moves towards the shore. Just a little bit down there. And let's go ahead then and, and splash on some foam and that'll give us a uh, good feeling right in here. So it separates it from the shore. We'll take our fan brush, 
which is also a fan blender, as we were saying. This is the blue, black, and white, two black, one blue, and white. It's lighter than the cloud color, and we splash against the shore. You can see that just comes up pretty close against the shore, yet these people are quite a ways from it. Just a little bit like that. That should be enough. A nice curve feeling. Doesn't it rise to that? Okay, splash a little bit behind there because there's been previous waves out there. I'm going to go ahead and take, uh, let's see, what brush? Sable brush. Let's take some of the same color we've been using for the foam, just a little bit lighter. And let's put on, it represents kind of like a sail, just a little bit of a curve. You can really make a caricature out of that. Push in so it has a lot of wind, so you know that the people are going to see who they're, whom they're waiting for very quickly. Who they're waiting for? Right. Need that dictionary. And then the, uh, come down close, more closely with the uh, pink, so you uh, get rid of a little bit of the background dark. Oh, that's a nice effect right there. Pushing against here. Can you see that? I think you can. I'll come down a little carefully there. Then you get a feeling like there's a lot of wind on that sail coming in, and they're coming right to you. They'll be there soon. OK, when we do something like this, we need to do like, um, like a great teacher not only says, follow me, the great teacher says where they're going. OK, where are we going? We're going to then put on some uh, dark sand. We're going to put on some lighter sand. We're going to put in some reeds. And then we'll put on the folks. So that's where we're going. The uh, brush that we'll use here, let's, take, let's go ahead and take this brush. This is a one inch brush, which we need to clean. This is a great paper towel. You get one that's very soft and it, it's good for the brushes and it's also great when you go up and uh, wipe off paint from the canvas. Okay, this is, this is orange umber, and no, this is foliage. Black, green, and equal parts. Black, phthalo green, you add a little ochre. And why am I doing this? I don't want to do that yet. You, you wait a minute. I want to take the dark sand, umber and ochre. There we are. Umber and burn umber and yellow ochre. This will come down close to the uh, foam. It's sort of an underneath color that you see through when you put the foliage up above it. Just kind of push it very lightly. We get a little bit of effect of it without it being very strong because it's kind of an underneath warmth that you want to feel. I see one thing that we might uh, make this a little bit better if we if we bring this down lower on the clouds she'll stand up a little higher and it makes her more dominant and that's that's the feature of this one is the uh, are the people so we'll bring this down just a little lower bring it down a little lower there too that puts them a little higher but notice how I have a nice curve going up there I like that composition gracefully in here swinging around you see the good light there and then you see the distant interest. So that has a nice rhythm, doesn't it? And that's very important. How, does the, how do you take a person through the picture as the viewer? Very pleasing thing to have done right. OK, what do we have now? We have some lighter sand color. This is the orange and umber and white. This will be down more in here. So you get a little bit of idea that, uh, sure, that's how they came in. That's how they came in and walked into that place. You don't see the bottom of the, the people, and that's so that you dwell just up on their unseen eyes. You see the back of them, but you get all the emotion of what they're feeling. That's, that's really effective when you can do, that, do it that way. I know what you're thinking. You think you know what I'm thinking. I think I know what you're thinking. Isn't that so true? The, the uh, foliage is going to be um, my black and green and ochre then. This is going to be pushed on a little bit. Let's take some medium because we first start out with uh, just a gentle squish, kind of whoosh around like this. And I need to have this uh, poke into the water, the foam slightly. We'll be doing more of this with a, with a liner brush or the twiggy brush in just a moment. But we start out with the large ones first. This will go up just a little bit 
towards the uh, sky and some down there. You see how you still see the sand showing through? And we'll have some that comes from right off the canvas, like this. This is nice where you don't see where the bottom of the grass is, but you know that it's growing all the way into where they're standing. You don't see a lot of difference there, where we do need to see the difference, and I'll take the twiggy brush, we'll take, uh, you, did you hear me kind of wiggle in the, in the cleaner? What I was doing was getting terps, terps on this, so it flows a little more freely. Look at those little strokes. Okay, now what way is the wind blowing? I think I took a little bit of liberties on this one, uh, having it go a little bit each way, but I guess the wind's sort of bringing them on in, so we, we kind of have that sea breeze that angles that way. But it's always good to have a few that are going the other way, otherwise it looks like a hurricane. A couple that go up in the sky just slightly, a couple over here. And when you come down lower, you say, well, I wouldn't see them if you do like what you're doing, so we'll lighten a little bit with white, maybe a little yellow. I need to run back quickly, just stay there. Run back quickly and get a little terps. There we go. And then this will be a little bit of lighter ones, yes. Bend these around. You can go from the top down or you can go from the bottom up. Someone says, <clears throat> that's the way they grow, from the bottom up. And I say, that's where they get their inspiration, from the top down. So you can go both ways, whichever you feel more comfortable doing. But some of each is good. Okay, now let's take the, remove the bandages. Dump, ba -dump, ba -dump. Here's to you, Warren. How do you do that? Oh, it works. It worked again, it worked again. Boom, isn't that effective? We'll take and blur a little bit on the lower edge so it removes a little bit of that cutout feeling. Come a little closer with the background to the girl. Now we'll go ahead and put the colors on them. I like that, that's very effective. What you could do too, you could paint the, the lady and the girl first, let it dry, put the contact paper over it, and then you come later and put the clouds over and when you pull it off, they're already painted. The contact paper is not gonna rip up any paint, but the, this is the way we're doing it this time. Okay, we'll start with the uh, lady because we need to have her dress on before the hand goes in on top of it. This is pure alizarin crimson. And dry brush, I'm using a uh, sable, flat sable brush. I'm pushing this on without too much quantity of paint. So you keep it in the dark and then the lights will be uh, more quantitative and you'll see that. Although I could put just a little bit uh, more strength right up in here. Okay, now let's take the red, and this is straight tube color. Do you see where we took the alizarin straight tube color? This is the red straight tube color. Say that 10 times, straight tube color, straight tube color. Here's the pure red. <whistles> Boy, that shows you where the light's coming from, doesn't it? Right along there, and this one has kind of a little special curves. I'm gonna take a round brush with the same red, dry brush, and watch this, you go boom, just slightly like that. Just a kind of an angle. The uh, far distant shoulder could have a little bit, same color of what you call a little bit of reflected light. Then it gets away from being too much of a silhouette. Isn't that effective? We to put on her hair. You know, that looks like my wife from behind. It really does, it's so amazing when I, paint pictures, just about every one, it starts looking like my wife. I remember being in the studio one time, this is black and red, I remember being in the studio one time of my teacher, Claude Buck, I was painting a self-portrait, and uh, Mrs. Buck came in, she says, oh, and she was across the room, she says, I see you're doing another picture of your wife. <laughs> well, I'd love to look like her. Okay, this is almost the color that's there, but you now can go out a little bit because it's wet. Go out into the background, soften into the wet blue sky. And we'll do one other little aspect of that. We'll take some of the blue. This is the uh, cloud color, blue, black, and white. And come up, and we're going to just uh, come over here, this same color, say push, whoop, just 
just a little reflected light on that dark brunette hair. I, I ran down and got the same thing, so I didn't feel I had to wait for you there. Okay, we'll, we'll put on the little girl, and then finally we'll push a little bit of light on the girl, uh, excuse me, on the hand that's on the shoulder. This is a girl's dress, and it's uh, black and white with a little orange in it. I'll push this on, and let's see, we want it to be a little stronger right near where the hand is, so that's very effective, very important. What do you call it? Bonding. That's what you call it. Bonding between the mother and child. Doggy and her pups. Okay, we'll push this over, and as we push it over, less paint, so it looks very dark in the shadows. I don't even mind if it touches a little bit of the red. That little reflected feeling from the mother's uh, drapery is fine. Pull this down. I want to have a little bit of a taper look there, so she, she's quite small and young. Just a little bit blending down. You notice how hard I'm pushing with the fingers so you don't get as much paint as if you were using a brush. Now, you don't have to use a finger. You could use a brush and push it harder and save the finger. Okay, on the girl's hand, this is the, the uh, same color as the dress, but there's a little more orange in it. You have very little showing here. Just a little finger towards where the thumb is. It's almost insignificant as far as character. Just a little roundness, a little extension of the fingers, just slightly coming out of there. Just patting mommy on the back slightly. Infec affectionate feeling. Okay, this is the color that we put down on the uh, light sand, the umber, ochre, and white. And this will go on as a base color for the hair, for the little girl. Let's see if I move my hand a little bit so you can see. Do the same thing as we did on the mother's hair, just soften out so it has less than a hard edge. Come down close, uh, closely against the mother's hand, put a little feeling of flow at the bottom, and then I, I sort of saved a spot there, which will be partly the highlight. I'll also go a little higher with the highlight right there, which we'll now do. And this is coming down, uh, let's see, I think I'll use the yellow ochre and white, Sable brush, still the flat brush. Oops, got a little generous chunk. We'll start up at the top, right along there. Now I'm push, pushing kind of hard because I want good sharp edge and quantity of paint. Okay, we have just a, a little feeling of hardness there, so I'll go out just a little further. And then we have the chance of just a little loose ones. Why don't I go ahead and take the twiggy brush on that, and what I'll do, put again the juice on, which is Terps, and this is the same color, but just a little bit more gentle strokes. See the little loose hair? Let's feather across slightly with the bunny brush. Looks like that. We could say, well, the mother has a glove on. There you are. But we have to put a little color on there, too. I'm going to take one touch. Uh, let's see. We have a little red and yellow. Little red, yellow brush mix coming over with a little yellow ochre. Uh, it almost drowned that out. Okay, come on up. This goes right there. You see just a slight warmth and caressing of that. Okay, I'll stop there and come with a little darker color. The darker color, this is the same thing we put on the girl's hair. Umber ochre and white. Okay, we need to be sure that our, the wrist is kind of small, and then we come down just a little bit of the side of the palm, and then we come down further, a slight bend, which you get a little feeling like the fingers are going out there. Might have to put just a little umber under that. We'll take umber, this is, uh, where do we have umber? Here's, here's a little black and red, that'll be fine. That'll give us a shadow on to the dress, the girl's dress from the mother, and at the same time I'm using it sort of as a drawing to a little more wrist and then down. How are we doing? Pretty good. Right there, right along there. Okay, I think that looks just about what we want. I'm going to take and just feather it slightly, feather it slightly, 
and one strong light on the girl's hair. Did I go too fast? Yellow ochre and white? Just right there. You didn't have to wait any longer, did you? We've done waiting. I hope that in your life, that when you wait, you anticipate great things happening. Be the best you can.